welcome to episode seven of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. I'm Kent Rourke. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we come to you almost every Tuesday night from Studio J at Jackson's Auto Family, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I want to thank the Jackson's family for giving me a job and Shane Jackson for uh, helping me put this together every week. Uh, tonight we have a very special episode. It's going to be a long episode, so you may have to uh, stretch your feet in the middle of it, your legs, and uh, get something to drink or hunker down right now. I know a lot of people of us, a lot of people join us uh, live, and uh, thousands of views after we're live. Of course, you can uh, catch us on Facebook anytime on POA History, and sometimes I share it to some of the other POA groups. Uh, some of the episodes are also on YouTube. Last couple are not, but I'm working on that. I'll end up putting uh, all of them on YouTube eventually. So, uh, of course, Black Hand and Beyond is about POA history, and the Beyond part is, you know, we talk about more modern stuff too. Uh, we are centered pretty much on history. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about P.L. Patrick, Pat Patrick from California, Southern California, and the Suncrest POAs and the impact she had on the POA breed. And we have a couple special guests uh, tonight. We have Sean Weiss from California and her mother, uh, Linda Owen. And uh, they, Sean grew up in the POAs as a five-year-old girl is when her family got in involved, uh, her and her sister and her, her uh, brother. And uh, Ray and Linda is her mom and dad, and that created the prefix Ray Lens. I know a lot of people have heard of that, R-A-L-Y-N, apostrophe S, Ray Lens from, again, Southern California. A lot of great POAs, especially in California. They had a lot of uh, state champions and regional champions and quite a few international as well. So uh, they're going to be our guests later on after we kind of wind down on the Suncrest. And so we got a lot of California history, you know, not all the POA history. That would take weeks and weeks, but uh, we're going to, I called it California POA dreaming, dreaming tonight uh, because we are going to be talking about several uh, programs. So uh, from California, I want to thank uh, um, Sean for giving me a bunch of pictures. Her and her son, Chris, sent me a whole bunch of pictures. And then I found some, and then Lisa Reckon sent me a lot of pictures, probably close to 100. I have about 150 pictures to get through tonight, so we're going to have to uh, move fairly fast on the picture scene. So our first picture there is uh, Pat Patrick when she went into the Hall of Fame. Of course, that's Ken Steele, a fellow Hall of Fame member. Uh, both of them are deceased now, but two great breeders. Uh, Ken is number one breeder of all time of national champions, international show and Congress champions. And Pat, I believe, is ranked fourth. I have to update it uh, for 20 still uh, before 2021 comes along the show. I need to update it. But uh, Pat's got about 100 and close to 150 wins as a breeder. And then uh, Dean Damon is right next to her, close in fifth place. And then there's a, a sharp drop off to the lower 100s. So your top four breeders in the country were Ken Steele, Gene Carr, Lynn Puffenbarger, and then Pat Patrick is fourth. Uh, so we got a lot of great uh, memories with the Suncrest. So there, there's going to be one of our guests tonight. I'm sure she sent me this picture, so she should be uh, proud of it. But that's uh, Lynn Puffenbarger we just talked about presenting an award to Sean when she was a teenage girl at a national show. She'll explain that to us, I'm sure. And then here's a Suncrest pony with uh, one of Sean's sons, uh, Matthew. And uh, well, the reason I included this so early is because... Um, Darren Vincent sent me quite a few pictures too. And uh, you remember her as Darren McBride showing in the 80s and 90s for uh, Pat Patrick. And then uh, she married Tony Vincent and became Tony Darren Vincent. And uh, they both showed Suncrest POAs and uh, really helped spread the Suncrest across the country. They went to the national show every year and did well, won a lot of titles. So I wanted to throw this picture in a little early. Uh, just to give credit to everyone that uh, helped me put this episode together. So when they inducted uh, Pat Patrick into the Hall of Fame in 2001, it was well overdue. Uh, but as you read this right here, this was written, uh, I read this for the first time in probably 10 years or more last night. And uh, 
It was written in the magazine in April like it usually is after the Hall and Fame inductees. And uh, it starts out kind of funny as lived near isolation for 30 years. So uh, she bought what became the Suncrest Ranch in, I believe, 1969 or 70. She started raising ponies in 1970. And uh, it talks about how she basically cleaned up this place. But I was trying to gleam information out of this article, so I dug and dug in my... uh, storage to find it and uh, i was a little disappointed because it only mentions one suncrest which i've written an article about that suncrest mare we're going to be talking about her a lot tonight that's forever amber and um, anyway she goes on page two of this i was kind of shocked because i didn't remember she thanks some people in here and she thanks darren vincent so uh, for presenting all her ponies and then she thanks me, Kent Rourke, for writing an article about her little mare, Amy, who she fondly called her Amy Forever Amber in 1977, solid filly she raised, and she colored up later. Uh, but we're going to show a lot of her foals tonight and talk about her. But I did write an article, I believe, in, oh, 99 or 2000, one of my first, probably in the top 10 articles I've written for the POA magazine, and I've written about 100 of them. And it was one of the early ones. So she was still producing at the time. I think she had two foals after I wrote that article and after that. And I believe she had 20 when I wrote it. So a great mare. But anyway, we'll start out with the first Suncrest that I ever heard of. And I imagine a lot of people are the same way. Uh, Suncrest Uncle Sam is a legendary gilding. And he went in the Hall of Fame in 2013. Again, just my opinion, but, you know, probably could have went in a lot earlier. He spent most of his life in California. He was in Arizona for a while. He was a beautifully put-together POA, could do it all, uh, kept his color most of his life. Uh, I probably won't give credit to all the kids that rode him and all the people that made him famous, and I apologize for that, but, you know, it's hard to keep track of all of us sometimes, and I am slipping a little bit, so... 15 years ago, I would have spotted off every person that ever probably wrote him. So uh, this was on the cover. I call him the cover boy because he was on the cover three or four times. I couldn't find one from about 85, I think it was, with one of the Sparks girls. Uh, But this was a girl from California. Maybe somebody watching can help me out. I think the last name was like Vincio or something like that. I forget her first name. It didn't mention it in the cover story. I didn't mention her name, but that was taken in Hutchison, Kansas at the World Show in 1980. So just think of that. He was probably about four then. So remember that when we look at some pictures later on how he matures and how stout he is there in 1980. And then we're going to go on now. He was sired by Suncrest Mr. Chips in Appaloosa and out of a POA mare. And I think he became the template for pat patrick's breeding program even though he was a gilding he became so famous and was so good in all the events that i think she realized i've got something going here if i breed little pony mares to appaloosa stallions i might get just what the poa breed wants and that's what she did for 30 some years and it uh, really really caught on tracy says reenie she thinks and i i think he got the right name Uh, Last name right, Tracy, pretty close anyway. I remember looking it up the other night when I pulled that magazine out, but I was a little disappointed because they didn't mention her first name. So uh, if you haven't went on and uh, on the POA history page and liked that one link, I won't be able to see your name when you're commenting. So like Tracy did it, a lot of other people did it. Otherwise, you just come up as Facebook user and I'll see your comment, but I won't know who's commenting. So if you have time or maybe for next episode, please do that. So this is a poor uh, picture here as far as quality, but it's a great picture. It was on the cover, and of course that's the Illinois show, the international show uh, from 1983. And uh, that's Kent Taylor, and he had Suncrest Uncle Sam. He was already a supreme champion when Kent got him, but he won a list of classes that year. Uh, He rode him for a couple years, and that year they really came together. They won a lot of national classes and uh, they won the high point in almost everything they entered and he was number one in the nation that year and uh, i wish that cover was a little clearer but i use these magazines for research so they get a little beat up but there he's already getting a little older and he's still in good shape and he's already got some of his best days ahead of him so they had a lot of pictures in the cover story 
it was a little different than the 1980 cover. They they included a whole bunch of pictures with Kent's showing Uncle Sam, and uh, Kent went on to be he's a, one of the top amateurs in the AQHA. He's in the Chronicle a lot. Has uh, like back covers and full colored page ads in the in the Chronicle advertising uh, him showing quarter horses. So he uh, he was a great exhibitor in youth and POAs in the early to mid 80s. Yep, Tracy just said, I beat you to it, Tracy. There's a little lag maybe, but uh, there he is there. Kent, stoic look there with that, that bay gilding with the star on his head. He That became iconic, Suncrest Uncle Sam. We're going to show you a lot of pictures of him because, like I say, he, he was one of the first Suncrests that really got the name out there. And still, it took quite a while to for people to realize that Pat Patrick was in California on her little ranch breeding some great POAs. Uh, she was almost like a one-hit wonder at first with Suncrest Uncle Sam, and then here comes the late 80s, and bam, in the 90s, and it was just champion after champion, which we'll discuss soon. I just wanted to show the versatility of Uncle Sam and just everything he did. Again, that's Kent. There he is driving, and that would be for high point. You know, they, they drove a lot so they could get win more points for the overall for the year. And, of course, he was fast, too. So here he is now. I believe this is Jennifer Sparks. I apologize if I have the wrong uh, Sparks. But uh, this is from 1989, and he won the Versatility Championship in 1989. So he was already an older gilding. Uh, we got to back up a little bit. The cover I couldn't find was uh, from 85 or so, but I believe the Sparks had him then, too. And he won grand champion at the international show in 1986 the first year that the height raised and uh yeah he could do it all you know he was fast he was good on the rail and he was a halter horse too even though he was kind of heavy and his neck was a little heavy but in 86 you know he was already uh pushing uh, he's about 10 years old i believe then when he stood grand and this would have been three years later uh he'd become the first of four poas bred by pat patrick to win the versatility at the national show. I mean, most people dream of breeding for one, and she had four different POAs uh, win it, and uh, one won it twice. We'll talk about him in a minute. So here's some more pictures of him on the rail. This would have been in the late 80s. And there's a reining picture again. Can do it all, jumping, cart, halter, reining. Uh, I didn't cut the Gary Hamilton name off there. That was in the magazine that way. I try not to cut off uh, photographers' names, uh, but that was like that. So I just wanted to mention that because I appreciate all the photographers, professional, and even the moms and dads that took these great pictures so we can remember this history. So now we're going to back up a little bit. In uh, one of the first stallions... Uh, Pat Patrick had. She did have Nana Sukin, but that's not him here. He was registered number uh, 14, Nana Sukin. We've talked about him before. He was in Kootenai Kids pedigree, his grandsire, I believe, on the bottom side. And then she also had Siri Sheik's Joker, and that's this stallion right here. And uh, she had some kids show him. You know, Pat never had children of her own, but she had kids come to her little ranch in Southern California and and rider horses. This was a cute headed early day POA. He would have been probably born in the 60s. He went back to Siri Sheik. I believe he was a grandson of Siri Sheik. So when she bred this stallion to Suncrest Amber Light, she produced a solid filly born in 1977 that she affectionately called Amy. And here she's an older mare. She don't look like a lot in this picture, but hey, she's she had a lot of babies, 20-some babies in her lifetime. She roaned out, of course. She ended up being a pretty good color producer. She was bred to a lot of Appaloosa stallions, a few POA stallions, and one corridor stallion that I know of. And uh, to best record, I might be wrong, maybe Lisa Reckon or somebody can correct me, but I believe she's the mother of eight international show champions. Uh, the Congress now, and uh, some of them probably won it the Congress even after the name was changed, but I'm pretty sure that's a record. I know a few mares have had five. I think there's a mare, too, that's had six. Seven's questionable, and eight 
that's uh, what I know of. I lost track of a last a couple of her last babies, but uh, eight is uh, pretty good. Yeah, I do believe she was homozygous, Tracy. She, uh, I think, of her twenty some babies, four or five of them were born solid, and I believe they all changed color just like her. So uh, most of them became pretty good color producers too. So uh, she was bred to a quarter horse once, and that baby was born solid. I'm not sure if I think it did color up. We'll talk about it later. So she was bred as a two-year-old, and in 1980, this is her first baby. And hopefully I get her name right. I believe this was Red Robin. Now, I may screw up some of these because there's a lot of suncrests, and this isn't in my wheelhouse. You know, it's I know the suncrest pretty well, but I don't know it as well as, like, Double Tough or Gold Prince or some of the Midwest horses. So, uh, but I'm going to try my best here. But uh, this filly won the California Futurity. If you're not from California or don't know the history of California POA, their Futurity has been uh, a quite successful Futurity and pretty competitive for a long time. I don't know what it's like now, but I'm sure it's still pretty good. But in the 90s, it was good, and she was still showing in the 90s, Pat, and in the 80s. And here's 1980. She won it with, uh, with Forever Amber's first filly. So, and this would have been by Tucson Bob, a stallion that uh, she owned and made famous in Appaloosa Stallion. If all Pat Patrick would have ever done is take Suncrest Forever Amber and breed her to Tucson Bob as many times as she did, that would have put her in the Hall of Fame. But, of course, she did a lot more than that, including Uncle Sam and other things. Plus, she bred for Forever Amber's mother, who was a supreme champion, Suncrest Amber Light. So... Uh, but that's the first baby. Now, here's another famous POA. He went in the Hall of Fame in 2016, and he won the Versatility Championship twice. He was the first POA to do so, and that's Suncrest Big Mac. He's pretty young in this picture. This is out in California, I'm sure. There he is again. Now, some of these Suncrests look alike, and... Uh, so it's a little hard to get, sometimes you can get them confused, but a lot of them were bays with little blankets, but uh, you don't get the the quality of them confused. They they were built well. Again, he would be an Appaloosa stallion to a little POA mare, and he was like the third baby in that cross. So now a filly born before him that I didn't talk about was, I believe, Amber Glow, Suncrest Amber Glow, and uh, she ended up going to Oklahoma for Donna Ware. And uh, the DDPOAs, she bred salty uh, Navajo britches to Amber Glow, who was born solid and roaned out, I believe. And that's where uh, some of the DD britches uh, came in. Uh, DD Amber britches, I believe, is a supreme champion, a national champion. That would have been from that cross. So, but this is, I don't have any pictures of that, but I will eventually on one of the broadcasts. But this is Big Mac. There he is on the cover. I believe that's Jill with him on the cover and uh, I think Chrissy Daniels wrote him I believe I know two different girls wrote him when he won and one was not Chrissy was 9 through 12 I believe so he won the versatility in let's see 92 and 93 I think yeah that's right okay here's another cross another full sibling of out of forever amber and tucson bob i wish i had some better pictures of this mare uh, i wish i had some colored pictures of this mare uh, this mare should be in the hall of fame again that's my opinion of the four sun crests that are in forever amber the mother to most of these should be in and Suncrest candy bar should be in the hall of fame i believe she was a 1986 this is darren uh, vincent shoner early she won grand in 1991 and 1992, she defeated the hardship Appaloosa mare that had won in uh, 88, 89, and 90. Was the reigning grand champion mare was HA's top request from Minnesota. And along came Darren with Suncrest Candy Bar and uh, beat her in 91 and then returned and won in 92. So uh, she also became a very good uh, brood mare. And what else she did is, let me make sure I got this right, what year she did it, 1994. 1994, she, uh, she won the versatility at the International, being the third Suncrest 
to win the versatility at the international show. I'm pretty sure Amber's not in the Hall of Fame, Tracy. I might have missed it, but I looked on the POAC.org website again today, and I didn't see her name. I know Candy Bar's not in there. I didn't see her either. So uh, Big Mac, Uncle Sam, Tomcat, and Miss Tattletail are all in the Hall of Fame. So there are four of them, which is good. So um, anyway, she uh, the Irwins had Candy Bar. And Stacy Irwin became a great trainer of not only POAs, but other horses. And uh, her and Darren's done a lot of good in Southern California for youth and POAs and Appaloosas. And uh, Candy Bar also became a champion broodmare. Uh, she had, I believe, at least one Futurity winner, if not two. And like I say, a two-time grand champion and a versatility champion. So here's a picture of her when she's a little older. You know, she looks like a kind of an old gray mare there, but you still can see that beautiful head and that quality body. And like I say, I wrote about her before in Tucson Bob's chapter and spots included. She needs to be considered one of the greatest uh, mares of all time, just the verb of accomplishments and her quality. So that's Suncrest Candy Bar. So here's another full sibling to Candy Bar and Big Mac and a couple others we talked about. Here's a nice Gary Hamilton picture, again with Darren showing off a trophy in 1988. And this is Suncrest Doughboy. And I always really liked Doughboy. He became a supreme champion, but he was quite a halter horse. He never won grand at the International. It was just a lot of tough competition right in his era. And he, he got beat a few times, I think, by younger horses. Uh, but he was put together. I mean, he looked like a, a quarter pony. You know, he, he looked like a... A little horse, not a small pony. So again, that was that Appaloosa stallion to little pony cross that Pat had down Pat. So this is Suncrest Doughboy. And here's a picture of Lisa Reckon uh, drew in, I think, 1999, it says there. I might have the wrong year, but, uh, you know, when somebody draws or paints a picture of your horse, he's he inspired something. So, and Doughboy was that kind of horse. That's what it was kind of fun putting this episode together uh, this week because so many people have so many famous favorite Suncrest. You know, some people like Big Mac. Some people's favorite is Uncle Sam. We haven't spoke about Tomcat much yet. And then you have Doughboy and Candy Bar. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. And there's some I haven't even got to yet that. Uh, meant a lot to families and did a lot. And if you put the, the ink down beside them, I mean, it's hard to compare some of these. They, they were some great ones. So, uh, and that's what led her to almost 150 national uh, wins as a breeder. So let's get back to some more pictures. So believe it or not, here's another full sibling to that cross, Tucson Bob and Forever Amber. And there's Darren again holding the little one. And uh, you're going to laugh in a minute when I show a picture, but this filly looks long-legged right there, but she really was a short POA. And uh, she became, this is Suncrest Valentine. And here's a little better picture of her. She was a little more pony of the group. She didn't grow up in height, but she won the uh, world in small mares, and she also won the international in small mares. And uh, she ended up being purchased by the Canton family of Minnesota. She was bred to... Bounce Back Jack and produce, produce Bounce Back Val uh, that Gene Carr exported to uh, Germany. And I believe she was one of the first, if not the first POA ever to go to Germany. It was a daughter of Suncrest Valentine. So she was always one of my favorites too. She's a cute little mare. And there she is there when they consigned her to the sale. I believe she was fairly young there, maybe two. Just a real typey small mare. Now that's a full sister to Candy Bar and Big Mac and Doughboy. Tracy said she rode against her in JPFC. That would have been that picture right there. One of the years for sure. Okay, so now we move on to another uh, Forever Amber Suncrest products. Now uh, this isn't by Tucson Bob. This is by... Uh, Century 21, another Appaloosa stallion that made his uh, name for himself in POAs. He had uh, quite a few champion POAs. I believe he, let's see, how many wins does he have as a sire? 
Century 21. Well, about three, I guess. But he, uh, this filly here, Kenton really never got her due. I believe she was injured. But she's that color. Tracy can talk about this color too. But uh, Pat produced a lot of these with the white mane and tails, almost like a silver. You know, they call them a liver chestnut. But they, nowadays we know a lot more about color, especially Tracy and some people that's researched it. So it's, it's almost a silver chestnut or almost a silver dapple. But uh, later on, when she kept some mares that were colored like this, she produced generations of colors uh, like this one here. But this was um, Suncrest Honey Bun. So now here's one of the later champions by uh, or out of Forever Amber. And this is Suncrest Lullaby. And there she is with Darren winning in 2001. I believe she's a two-year-old there. And uh, she was a champion filly, and uh, she ended up being uh, owned by Lisa Reckon, and we're going to look at some of her babies later on out of Ultimate Bounce. But another quality POA. Now, she didn't have the light mane and tail. She just was a bay, but you can see the quality and just the way her neck comes out of her shoulders. And, of course, Darren knew how to present them, too. She still does, and she does clinics and uh, lessons, and J Darren's a very... Uh, well-respected judge all around the, the country. Okay, now I might not be in sync here, no pun intended, but Suncrest Cinco de Mayo, and uh, there's Kelsey with him as a young girl, and I'm just going to start showing some of the Suncrests. I mean, we'll be here uh, for about four days if I go in-depth too much on all these, but Cinco de Mayo was a champion. Here's Suncrest Hello Dolly, Maybe not as famous as some of the Suncrest. She was a little more typey, uh, but she could do it all real fast, POA, real sharp-headed. Um, and uh, she did win quite a few national titles. Okay, here's one of the solid babies that Pat had that she kept as a stallion for a while. She did end up keeping quite a few stallions. Some of the pictures that Lisa sent me ended up not getting on here because it's just... Sometimes it's a nightmare right while I'm working and trying to get everything loaded up uh, to go live. Uh, there's a lot of pressure going live around 6.30 every Tuesday night, especially when I, I work all day. So I'm missing some pictures, but this is one Pat sent me when he was a baby. And uh, this is just in case, and I believe she kept him for a while. Uh, she ended up having uh, Suncrest Jackpot, Poker Chip, Tattoo, and Charlie My Boy were some of the Suncrest stallions that she raised and kept for a while. She was never afraid to uh, try different stallions. Uh, Sean and I was talking about this earlier today, how she would try Appaloosa stallions that no one else ever bred to in POA, and some of them ended up being well-known, and it was because of Pat breeding them to her little POA mares. Now here's the aforementioned Suncrest Charlie My Boy. He'd be a grandson of Forever Amber, Beautiful colt. I don't think he showed a lot. I think that's at the California Futurity. He might have won that. I'm not sure. But I know he didn't end up going uh, nationally showing. But he became a stallion for quite a while at, at Suncrest. Uh, one of his famous sons sold for a lot at a sale and became a pretty well-known sire, especially in the Midwest. And that's Boston's Matt Cloud. The Damons had him for quite a while, a big few spot stallion, huge hip stallion. He was the son of this little baby here, uh, Charlie, my boy. So I believe this is Miss Tattletail. She's in the Hall of Fame. She won the versatility in 2004. So she was the fourth Suncrest to win and the fifth title for a Suncrest. Unbelievable. Look at all that swag she's got in front of her there in 2004. That would have been the year she won the versatility competition. She was quite a POA. She went in the Hall of Fame in 2008. Believe it or not, she's one of the. She's not one of the early Suncrest, but she was the first one to go into the Hall of Fame. And I think this is Moonshine. I might have that wrong, but it's one of the moons, I think. Okay, here is Tony Vincent, and he's showing Suncrest Tomcat. Now. Tomcat's kind of like Doughboy. They're completely opposite in builds and color, but, you know, I'm, I've have a, 
hard to believe that he was never a grand champion stallion at the national show because or gilding i mean because he was a great built gilding and uh the do-it-all gilding he's he's famous he went into the hall of fame in 2012 so he was the second suncrest to go into the hall of fame but you see here and he's younger here this is still when when vincent's were training on him and he's uh he's just an awesome looking poa Here's some more Tomboy. Tomcat, I'm sorry. Tomcat. No one corrected me. I corrected myself before somebody beat me to it. But uh, Suncrest Tomcat. Got Doughboy and Tomcat. I hope I'm saying Suncrest every time. It's when you got Salty, Santee, uh, Suncrest, and you get tired, sometimes you mess up. But there he is again. That's Suncrest Tomcat. I want to thank everybody for commenting. We're just going to scroll through some of these. Um, I had so many people send me pictures. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to try to give credit where I can. Some of them, you know, I just can't remember who they are, but hopefully people watching will appreciate them and can remember them. That's Darren and Tony there. She won a lot of saddles, a lot of JPFC. Uh, she basically put Pat Patrick on the map. Uh, Pat had a good program going, but she was kind of isolated in California. I mean, there was a lot of, there's been lots of POA members from that area of California, the Sunny Mead, Riverside, Norco area uh, for a long time in the 70s and stuff. And the two internationals being in California in 1970 and 77 also helped uh, boost membership, I believe. But, um, you know, I always say it, you need breeders, you need the show families with the kids, and then you need the trainers or the people that have the stables if they don't have stables on their own. It's not like it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Not everybody has five acres and a little barn and a lot riding arena. Uh, you need people like uh, Darren where you can go and uh, take lessons. Here's another Suncrest Magic Moments. She won some stuff at the Futurity with Darren. I believe this is Cinco here. I might be wrong, but I think that's Cinco de Mayo in California showing. Okay, now here's a POA I'm going to talk about for a while. I wish I knew a little more about him. I know there's people on here that will know a lot more than I do. Another Suncrest that I didn't think got his due. Uh, he ended up siring uh, quite a bit more than any other POA Suncrest, but this is Tattoo, Suncrest Tattoo. And uh, he ended up being gilded. I believe he's a supreme champion. And uh, he, he was always, a, when I seen him at shows, he was a well-mannered stallion. And I told somebody just this week that he was the epitome of a Prince Plotted POA in my book. If you want to get Prince Plotted in the POAs, which a lot of people did, and Wee's Camp Breeding, which a lot of people got credit for, and uh, Pat really never did. And here she bred to stallions like Prince Chicaro and uh, stallions like that. He's still alive in Oregon. Okay, Tracy, he's still alive. He is gilded, though, I believe. But uh, he was just a great stallion, and if you look at him, doesn't he look like a miniature version of, of Prince Plotted in a POA package? And like I say, he did end up siring. Uh, she used him for a while. Uh, Pat, and then he moved on, and I got an ad here for him. There he is on the rail in 2002. There's some more pictures of him. There's a good headshot. Everybody's in agreement he's gilded, so. Uh, somebody asked, did I miss Mac? I don't know who you are, but yes, you did. I can flip back, but... Uh, yep, you missed Mac already because he would have been before Tattoo. But we talked about him. Uh, we, we gave him some credit. Again, like I say, if somebody draws a picture or writes a song about you or something like that, you're probably a pretty good horse. Well, same thing if they name a farm after you. Uh, Tattoo Me Farm, Suncrest Tattoo. Uh, there he is in California. So somebody can give the credit out to that family. I apologize. I can't remember everything, but this was a cool ad. I remember when this came out in the magazine. That would have been in the early 2000s. 
And this is one of his daughters, was kind of a spitting image of him, just a little more feminine. This was Suncrest Rose Tattoo, and she won the international as a yearling. That's Tony Vincent at the Halter, 2001 National Show. And she went on to do a lot, too. I believe her career was cut short a little bit because of uh, injuries, but she did have a good POA career. Jill Cleveland is who said, okay, I mentioned you, Jill. There was a picture of you on there, so you're smiling. You look good. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. You can watch this from its entirety uh, forever on Facebook, so uh, just go to the POA history page, and you'll be able to watch it once we're done uh, recording it live. The Sanger family had him good. Okay, that's they had tattoo. Okay, here's a good picture of Pat taking a break at a California show. And this is one of the more modern Suncrest. People that go to the Congress now will know him. And this is Suncrest Sandman. He might be a little different color. Again, that's that silver chestnut color. And uh, that's Pat either getting ready to show him or waiting to go back in. And there he is now. We all know POA has changed a little bit. But uh, a lot of the Suncrest, because she put so much horse, most of them are half horse or more, uh, they're fast. A lot of Suncrests are fast, and this guy can flat out fly. He's owned by the Kimry family in Minnesota. Of course, Danielle is from the famous Kruger family. She showed Black Swan, made Black Swan a household name. Uh, they owned Kiddo Tough. They owned all kinds of stuff. Um, Danielle and her sisters were all great horse women. They all still are. They all are involved in horses. All grew up in POAs. Danielle's daughter, uh, shows him, and I'll show a picture of her here in a minute. And I apologize, Danielle, if I get the name wrong, but uh, there's her daughter, Danielle's daughter there. Like I say, he's a speedster. He's won national titles, I believe, last year in Tulsa they did. So, And there he is, winning one of those titles. I'm going to take a break right here. If you need a drink of water or something, I need to try to get his name let's see sandman carly carly kimray there we go shout out to carly i was great friends with your grandpa carly and there she is winning a check and i like this next picture because there's her mom there's danielle kimray danielle kruger she grew up in poas and she's holding the plaque she won with the little speedster Suncrest Sandman. Okay, here's another great Suncrest. I remember this gilding. I read his pay pedigree when he was a yearling. I believe he was at the end of the sale because he was a little tall. And I can remember it. We were trying to get bids, and I said, this is a champion in the making. He's just the California sun grew him up a little early, and he did end up staying in height and winning a lot. And that's Suncrest Pied Piper. And this is a headshot of him here. Let's see. And this is Jennifer, I believe, in the picture. He's a beautiful snow cap. There he is there. I know a lot of people know Pied Piper. He's had a long show career. Here he is again. We have some modern black and white pictures just for effect. You're so used to black and white pictures on Black Hand and Beyond. Tonight we got mainly colored pictures, so we got some in classic style here. But he's a modern day POA, Pied Piper. I believe he's a 2000 model, close anyway. Okay, I might screw this up, but I think this is Miss Tattletail again. I believe it is, pretty sure. Real famous POAs, won a bunch in the Hall of Fame, won the versatility. Yep, that's her right there. And there's the owner's names written there. I believe it's the Millers. Another great example of a Suncrest, Ms. Tattletail. And I believe she was out of Miss Muffet, I think. Let's see. I did do a little research. Miss Muffet's one of my favorites because uh, some friends of ours bought her in Minnesota and we brought her to Kiddo Tough one time for him and he ended up selling for uh, 
I believe 3,600 at the sale. He was a high selling weanling that year. And uh, yep, Miss Muffet is Miss Tattletail's mother. And she's the mother to a bunch of great ones. She was in Iowa for quite a while. I don't have any pictures of her, but I want to thank Jordan Gardner. I reached out to Mike and Jordan, some good friends of mine, some great breeders. Of course, everybody knows the Gardners from Utah and the RY POAs. This is Amber Moon, Suncrest Amber Moon, and Jordan Supreme Pur, I believe. There she is in her prime. They bought her at the international sale. And there she is with a little age on her. Great POA, Amber Moon. Good ambassador, great ambassador for the POAs, just like the gardeners are. I'm going to run through some of these pictures pretty quick. There's Pat, a great picture of Pat I included with Shannon Clark. Uh, Shannon worked for her for a while, I believe, for a year or so or more. And uh, maybe Shannon can come on here and mention some stuff, some stories. But I know it's hard sometimes, and it takes a long, you know, you can't tell a story in 30 seconds, especially about POA people. And uh, Pat's just one of those great POA breeders that we've lost. You know, we she was a big part of POAs. She didn't come around to a lot of national shows and sales. She did towards the end. I got to meet her a couple times. I talked to her on the phone a few times when I was researching about Tucson Bob and Suncrest uh, Forever Amber. Uh, but in California, she was a staple, I believe, at the shows. And, of course, everybody wanted her Suncrest ponies. Okay, so we're going to get into, this is Ultimate Bounce, and I'm going to show something here and go back to him. But, I want, again, I want to thank Lisa Reckon for uh, the information she shared with me about Pat Patrick's Suncrest POAs. And uh, Ultimate Bounce is a POA that was born in Minnesota, and Lisa bought him as a baby. And uh, Pat actually bred to him towards the end of her program. And two of the last POAs that she produced was by him. That's why I included him tonight. And this is, let's see, Suncrest Shiner, I believe is his name. Yep. And he was out of Lacey Patches, another famous mare, champion mare, Suncrest Lacey Patches, champion producer. Here's another picture of him. You can see even at the end of her program, and she was getting up there in years, she was still producing quality POAs. And these were POA to POA because she bred to Ultimate Bounce. Uh, and, but, you know, he's got a lot of horse. So there's another one of her last ones. This is another Ultimate Bounce filly. And I believe this is Sugar, I think was her registered name, Suncrest Sugar, a snowcap. She was out of uh, Suncrest Sassy Lassie. And if I was breeding right now, I'd love to find that filly because she's not that old. Uh, so I'm not sure where she is, but if somebody knows where she is, she would make a great broodmare prospect. Maybe she already is, or maybe she's on the rail. Who knows? But So that was some of the last... Uh, Suncrest, again, they were by Lisa Reckenstay and Ultimate Bounce. So Pat really got down the, you know, the putting as much horse as she could, but still keeping that pony feel and the pony height. You know, once in a while she'd have some problems. I knew Tracy would like her. <laughs> There's your mission, Tracy. Go find her. I know a stallion in Florida that crossed great with her. Uh, maybe even throw a blanket. Okay, so this is Lullaby. When she was a little older, when she became a brood mare. Again, we seen a picture of her earlier. And Lisa had this mare and uh, raised quite a few babies out of her. I believe three. I think she had three or four babies, this mare. And uh, this is stepping out with the bounce as a baby, an ultimate bounce foal. We're going to see quite a few of his foals right now because that's Lisa's program. Lisa's the Sky Rock. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people know the Sky Rock. She's made a name for herself from California. There he is as he's growing up. He's a yearling there, winning a trophy as tall as his belly. And there he is as an older horse. And there, stepping out with the bounce as a mature POA. 
Now, a couple of these lullaby babies are really close in color, and they're full brothers, so I might get them mixed up. Lisa, if I do, I apologize. Uh, but one is Hits the Spot, Skyrock Hits the Spot, and one of them is Skyrock Maximum Bounce. And we're going to look at one of them's a little more English. I believe this is Hits the Spot, but I could be wrong. And there he is. Looks like a good hunter in hand POA there to me. And then I believe this is Maximum Bounce. And these are all by Suncrest Lullaby, who was one of the later daughters of Forever Amber. And she was a national champion. And Lisa Reckon of uh, Skyrock POAs raised some champions out of her. Yep, somebody just said Max. So I got that right. That's Maximum Bounce. And the other one was Hits the Spot. So this one is, <laughs> I believe this is Sunrise, Skyrock Sunrise, out of Lullaby. And there she is when she got a little older. And then this Skyrock POA here is actually by Tattoo, I believe, Suncrest Tattoo, and out of Suncrest Moonbeam. And I think my Moonbeam picture's got left out I apologize but I had some good pictures of her but here's another action shot she kind of looks like a Suncrest even though she's a Skyrock but she should she's double bred Suncrest and here she is at a show tied to a trailer a little older okay so I hope you enjoyed the Suncrest portion of the show uh, I got a little information to go through it's just not always about the photo, about the slideshow. I hope you enjoy the slideshow. You can always give me feedback. You know, I don't want any negative criticism. I get enough of that at work. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, life's good. But anyway, there was 12 Supreme Champion Suncrest that I could find. And I'm just going to run them off here. I won't say Suncrest every time. But we have Pied Piper, Rose Tattoo, Tomcat, Ms. Tattletail, Amber Moon, Tattoo, Doughboy, Candy Bar, Big Mac, Robin Hood, Uncle Sam, and of course Amber Light, who was the mother to Forever Amber. So two of them were way early, Amber Light and Uncle Sam, and then I believe Robin Hood, Big Mac, Candy Bar, and Doughboy are all full siblings by Tucson Bob and out of Suncrest Forever Amber. So, and then of course we have not Supreme Champions, but Champion POAs, and I mentioned, showed pictures of most of these. Uh, Miss Muffet, Cinco de Mayo, Lacey Patches, Honey Bun, and Valentine. And then there's Lullaby, Magic Moments, Storm King, Sandman, Moonshine, and I'm sure I'm missing uh, quite a few. Suncrest for uh, Hello Dolly, and then, of course, the ones that are in the Hall of Fame, which are all Supreme Champions. Big Mac, Uncle Sam, Tomcat, and Ms. Tattletail. So I hope I did justice to the Suncrest. Um, I grew up, you know, enjoying Uncle Sam and not knowing hardly anything about the Suncrest. Didn't know if they were still breeding. Then I come to find out they'd been breeding the whole time. And then, like I say, here they come. Darren started coming with prospects. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. So, uh, anyway, we're going to move on now to the second portion of the show. And here's a picture of the series image. And we're going to talk a little bit about California history. And I'm going to make a phone call. So, Sean, if you're watching, hopefully there's not too big of a lag. I need to find a non-580 number. There it is. Hello. Hello, I hear the lag. I hear my voice in the yeah, background. So, are you there, Sean? Yes. Okay. Is your mom with you? Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, Linda. You may have to turn the sound down a little bit on the on the podcast. 
Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay. Hi, Linda. You may have to turn the sound down a little bit. We're hearing all those. So some of the comments coming in, Tracy Keene said, Yay, my friend Sean, she is an amazing person. So you're already getting admirers. Okay, there we go. There we go, yeah. I don't like listening to my voice, so. But <laughs> I know. I had to have my, my computer kids come and do it. Oh, yeah, really? Well, I want to thank, who was your son that sent all the pictures? Chris? That's Chris. Chris, yeah. yeah. Thanks to Chris for sending all the pictures. And uh, I didn't uh, take any pictures off because the way I do it, I, I'm, you know, getting older too, and it's hard for me to do this. So we might go through some of these pictures fast because about all 80 pictures that you sent me are on here. So, <laughs> And some of them are not in order. I got series image and carbon copy right up front, but now some of them are – I tried the best I could, but it took, takes me about an hour to two hours to switch all the pictures around, so – uh, well, I didn't know what you might need. Right. So well, I'd rather have more than not enough, you know, so. That's uh, kind of what I figured. Right. And people will be sending me pictures all week now because of this show, this podcast, saying, you know, here's it. And then I put them on the history page so people can see some of them. But, uh, well, why don't you introduce your family a little bit, Sean, and uh, a little bit of the, the Ray Lynn background and your mom and dad's uh, little story. And, and then I'll just, we'll kind of go from there. Well, first I want to start by saying uh, you did a great job with Suncrest. You've oh. known, my family has known Pat and Maggie for forever. I grew up knowing them as a little kid and then on through my, my youth and then adult. So uh, you did a great job. You covered so many horses. <laughs> there was a <laughs> Thank lot you. <laughs> Thank you. I was afraid I was going to mess some up, but hopefully I'll have to watch it again with my notes and see. But thanks oh, for saying that. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but... Um, yeah, my uh, my parents got into POAs when we were just youngsters, and uh, I think I, I got my first POA when I was six years old. My uh, my mom is here with me, Linda, and uh, Mike and Chris are over there listening on the couch. So okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, we we're looking at a picture of Linda right now, and uh, she's a young woman in this picture showing Raylan's Wichita. That's my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful yeah. woman, Linda. You look nice in your Western outfit. I won't say what year. I don't know what year anyway. But It was uh, about 50 years ago. Really. <laughs> about 50 years ago. That. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's what this is all about. So. Yeah, it's about some history. Yep. Yeah. Isn't it funny that she was showing Wheelings and we all noticed. She didn't have a hat on. <laughs> she didn't have a hat. I noticed that right away. I'm like, well, they're from California. She's showing without a hat on. That's what I thought right away. No, we were a bit more casual then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's still cool. That's kind of a nice leopard there. The halters were different back then, too. You know, you had the everything. band over the years. Yeah, everything was different. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yep. Who's asking? Yep, Tracy's asking. Yep, that was... Uh, Sean's family. Sean's uh, maiden name is Owen. Her mom and dad is Ray and Linda Owen, and uh, she taught me this today. So I'm, <laughs> I'm acting like I know a lot now. But you gave me this. So Ray and then Linda. That's what formed the Ray Lens. So uh, yes, it is. Yep. Uh -huh. And uh, I know you know you've got they bred for some national champions. So I seen the Ray Lens every time I did the the studies, you know, and, uh, that's, I told you, I'm, I'm a little dyslexic. A lot of POA people don't realize that, but I have a hard time sometimes. So growing up, I always said Raylan. And then when I was looking at it this week, I said, wow, I might've been messing that up, you know, and then I, you said, no, I had it right. So I felt good about that. So. Yeah, no, you did it right. Yeah. Yeah. You did it right. So you guys had a, a stay in that, uh, Series image, right? Was one of their first stallions? Well, first, we had carbon copy. Was first. Copy. Okay. Yes. Uh, my husband and I bought him when he was two. Okay. And that picture that you have of him that's right behind him, which is picture, that was when he was two and when we first got him. Little pot did it, but <laughs> he was still a pretty good-looking animal. Right. And 
he was a son of Terry Sanders. Okay. Here he's a little older. Maybe he's a little more tucked up. Another picture I got that well, they his, sent me. His, his shape changed considerably after we got him. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he looked yeah, like a Siri. You could tell he had that Siri look to him. Yeah, he was he was a really smart little horse, and uh, there's a good picture of him when he was three, when we my husband first started showing him at three. Okay. But Carvin was our stallion for quite a few years, and then we got the chance to um, lease series image from Dean Kenny, who who owned him. Okay. Uh, Dean Kenny got him directly from Paula Cooper. Okay. And I believe he was he was born in Arizona. I'm sure, I think he was. Yeah, he yeah. was an own son of Siri Chief. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and then we we just stood image. Uh, it wasn't too many years after we got image that we gilded Carbon. And um, actually, when Sean was going to start writing Carbon, my husband decided that we better just go ahead and gild him. Uh, our son had shown him as a stallion, Rodney. Okay. Done very well with him, but. We just felt that it'd be better, and Carvin was happy. Yeah. He was happy, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was happy that we right. did because he got to do a whole lot more. <laughs> right. At the building. So I know there's some people watching tonight that remember Dean Kenny, probably more that doesn't, unfortunately. But he had blue ribbon POAs, right? Yes, he did. Okay. And, and Dean was. We learned a lot from Dean and Mary and Kenny. Uh, they were they were in POAs long before we came along okay and they had some oh just top quality animals we bought quite a few animals from them um after the image went over heights and so he was always an id right and when the heights went up to 56 image got his papers back (laughs) and he was an old man by then but yeah at that he was definitely an old man by then but at that time then dean kenny gave image to us oh okay that's cool we had leased him for years and uh he had a home with us so dean just gave because we never did show him i mean there was no need right he did did his thing for the breed he he (laughs) sure did yeah uh and I, I believe he, I know he was a national director, I'm pretty sure. There's pictures of him in the magazine, yep, when he'd run for director. And I always liked his write-ups. Of course, it's after the fact. I never knew the man, uh, but I knew of him, you know. But uh, So here's a picture of Ray, uh, your husband, with Raylan Siri Delight oh, as a baby. See it. It's coming up. <laughs> yeah, he, he showed Delight for, well, since he was about two Okay. And then and then he stopped showing her, and then Sean broke her to ride and started training on her. And, okay. Uh, Hopefully there's a right. picture of her here when she gets Yeah, the... right there it is. Right there she is. Yeah. Yep, that's her. Oh, she was pretty. She was pretty. Yeah, she was she... out of the mare named the Lost River Series Snowdrop. Okay, I remember Mary that. She and... had gotten out of youth, uh, Idaho. Yep, and Lost River. So... She was a well-known POA, right? Lost River Series Raindrop? Well, no drop. No drop? No drop, not raindrop. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't know how well known she was. She was well known in California. But, um, <laughs> Maybe uh, that's what I'm thinking. Know, we did not go nationally with, with uh, snow drop. Okay. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't traveling that much nationally at the time. We'd, we'd go to Arizona and Oregon and Washington. and Not to Washington, but uh, then throughout California. But, yeah. Uh, Okay. There you are again, Linda, with no cowboy hat on, showing off that Isn't blonde that hair. Funny? Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't like to wear a hat. <laughs> now I know where Farrah Fawcett got her look from. She, she copied it from Linda Owen in California. She must have seen you on the horse place there driving by in her convertible and said, I want hair like that. So I'm just well, that, picking that on That pony I'm meeting there, that was another one that we got from Dean Kenny. Her name was uh, Blue Ribbon Bambi. Bambi, yep, okay. And she was the daughter of Siri Simmons. Okay. So that we got quite, a, like I say, quite a few ponies, or not quite a few, I would say maybe five, six ponies from Dean Kenny. Okay. 
That's good. Yeah. I remember the name Blue Ribbons for sure, just like I remember Raylan. So even though growing up in the Midwest, but reading the magazines and stuff and the show results from years before I was even born, you know what I mean? Or And then during the 70s and stuff, I remember some of those names. So, um, there's Bambi with Sean. Sean and is a young one. In answer to Tracy's question, yes, there was a blue ribbon bunny. There was a bunny. <laughs> yeah, this is Bambi, yeah, but there, she asked that before Bambi even come on the screen. She asked yeah, that she remembered a bunny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's my. Uh, even though it says Sean Owen, my my son put that wrong. That's actually my sister Tammy. Oh, and that's so, not you. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, thought the hair I, was a little dark, but I wasn't going to say know, anything. I know. Yeah, no, I don't have a dark hair. No, that's my sister. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, and you know the. The, the style was so much different back then. You know, the short, the tails couldn't be um, below the hawk, you know, that, right. and the jeans had to be roached. And, yeah, um, they actually trimmed the tails. Now they add hair. It's a, you know, million-dollar business yeah. now. And I, back then, you'd have to cut it so it was above the hawk. I know. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. You know, we we had a lot of a lot of different things back then. But, um, right. you know, we were very active in our in our southern chapter of California and also up and down our state. Our state is so unique where it's very, very long. Oh, my gosh, that is a really cool <laughs> picture. When The last year I showed as a youth, my, before I aged out, uh, we traveled. My mom and I traveled. I had two ponies I was showing. Well, Carvin was a, he did cart, and we went to, um, what was their name, Mom? The Richland Farms. Like Richland Farms, and they, they had these, these carts that they went all over town in and he said well you do cart don't you and i said yeah and so he said let's hook your horse up to the to the buggy and we went around the town and stuff <laughs> so, was that in uh south dakota that one yes it, yes it was okay yeah i met him with dr john enburn yep yes and bonnie it, was one of his was, daughters yeah it was so much fun we stayed at their house and stuff it was cool it was so cool they were the nicest people yeah but, um yeah, yeah, they're the Richlands people. People know Richlands Pole Kitty and a, quite a few other Richlands. And yeah, uh, yeah he's in the my Hall of Fame. Dog, my mom's dog's up there. But yeah, he said, yeah, let's put your horse up. <laughs> and <laughs> you drove around. Places. Where was that? Del Rapids or somewhere in, near Del? Um, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Like that. Yeah, he that's sure cool. Was a when he told me that, and off we went. <laughs> <laughs> Advertising <laughs> POA. He had a collection of those old buggies like that, and all totally restored. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's Yes, he had a cool. barn full of them. I never like, knew that. I never knew that about yeah, him, but that makes sense, yeah. It was yeah. like a kid in a candy shop, <laughs> us drooling over those cars. Yeah. Right. And buggies, they weren't just carts, they were buggies. Right, yeah. buggies. I believe he was a veterinarian, uh, John Edinburgh. I, I think he I, was. I, I, was, yeah, yeah. Was, they were just the nicest people. They sure were. Yeah, I got to talk to him a little bit when I was a teenager. He was still around and on the board for a while in the mid '80s. So here's Blue Ribbon's Water Witch, <laughs> kind of a weird name, but it says Tammy. Is that well, there's, there's a reason that she was named that, I think. <laughs> yeah, so see, Blue that mare was born in Arizona. Okay, she was she was a, a daughter of Siri Jody. Okay. And a nap of horse, and, uh, which actually makes her half-sister to Terry Rex. Right. But she was out in the desert, and she could always find water. <laughs> that on Paula Cooper's ranch, I guess it was huge. Dean Kenny went there several times, and that's where he got her. And she could find water, and that's why she got that name. Oh, okay. Water. It wasn't because yeah. of her disposition. It was because she was a water oh, finder. Oh. She was the sweetest, sweetest <laughs> little kind man. Well, she looks cute. She does look something like Siri Rex, too. Of course, that coloring. So Tracy yeah. asked earlier about some of the gray, maybe, and I don't think some of those were, like carbon copy and stuff wasn't, but Siri Rex for sure was, and this mare probably was, you know, had the yeah, gray. That mare was white. white yeah. Her white was glistening white. Right. Yeah. And right. then she just had a few black spots on her, but on her she head. was a very pretty little horse. Right, she looks it. She looks yep, very keen headed. That's tucked in pretty good back in the day, there, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, here's a, uh, yeah. here's Wichita, Snowdrop it, that you mentioned the earlier. The foal that you showed earlier, Wichita, um, Water Witch is Wichita's mama. Okay, 
All right, yeah. that's good to know. That's cool. I got a lot of pictures of Tammy here, Sean, but we'll get some of you too. So. <laughs> well, I, my my sister showed, um, you know, also, and um, I wanted to show her on Snowdrop because what well, we called her Drip, which is kind of weird, but my <laughs> my sister <laughs> my sister was was very she loved like jumping and all of that, and, and when the international show was in uh, in Tura, she my sister won the the girl's Doxy application. That's it, that's what it was called then with Doxy application. Oh, and yeah. it was a really big feat for, you know, us girls here, you know, that just showed mainly in California to win such a huge, huge class. Right. Um, and stuff. So I just wanted to give a shout out to my sister because I, I just always was so proud of her for doing that. Well, that's so. a very good picture too. So it is a good yeah. picture. So well, again, again thanks for all the pictures. What you don't know is back in the day, we used to have on our truck horses, and that's what that horse is looking at, is a cowhide. Oh, okay. <laughs> the horse is looking at a cowhide over there going, oh, get out of here. Right. So, this is my sister's first horse, Julie, which kind of, this one and another horse started us all out on those spotted horses that Mama wanted us to ride. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, this came from a lady by the name of Peg Rose that um, my mom, this lady that my mom found, and she had got a couple of horses from. And that started it all. Started and the spotted pony. And that there is the daughter of the Appy Horse Bear Step. Okay. All right. So I, that, I know that name. Yeah, well, that's, that's the daughter of Bear Step. Okay, that's cool. And the other pony that we bought at the same time, Peg Rose, the, the one we bought for Sean, was the a daughter of the son of Bear Step. Okay. Have, I, I haven't seen a picture of Sean's first POA yet. But I'm not sure if, it, if it's in here or not. It should be coming. Here's you know, Bobby with Blue Ribbons Bambi. Yeah. Okay. And let's see. Oh, we're getting in a little modern now. This is Lady Salty Don, but it's still when you were a kid. Is that you, Sean? Yeah, yeah that's that's me. That that's the mare we bought from uh, Harvey Roman's out of Kansas. Um, oh, that Indian costume. Barbara Johnson from Northern California sent me that Indian costume <laughs> to show my last year, and um, I was just as thrilled as I could be that she lent that to me. Um, you know, it's a big thing to lend somebody such a such a costume. Oh right! Yeah, I was um, I was very proud that she she lent that to me, and uh, it looks good was, too. Uh, yes, yeah, she it, <laughs> blue eyes and braces and blonde hair. So that was <laughs> <laughs> so that's a wig you're wearing there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I figured it was. Yeah. You got the look yeah. down, and I like the face of the horse too. You know, it looks it looks the part. So. Yeah, okay, that, that so cool here's the same mare now with the next generation. I, I did get this in order to try to show the coolness here. Uh, Danny with Lady Salty Don. I don't know if it's caught yes. up yet. There you go. Yes, she has some, some more age on her, but uh, Danny and that mare just did really well, and they clicked really well, and... Um, that was in his, my son's horse. It's kind of cool that I got to pass my horse down to him. Right. That's why I put those back to back. I did do that much. Some of them I just didn't have time. So we'll, we'll go and there might be some old pictures again of blue ribbons or some Raylands. But uh, I tried to get some of the more modern POAs you've had lately, Sean, in your program uh, towards yeah. the back, towards the end. But uh, yeah. do you, I, uh, do you remember how that mare's bred at all, Lady Salty Don? I imagine she's got yes. salty in her. Yes, little birches. Okay, that makes Looks sense. Fire. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a black quarter mare. I oh. forget her name. Okay. She was black, and she was a quarter horse mare. Okay. So, yeah, that stands the test of time. Little britches to a quarter mare, for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, Salty moved, moved more like a horse than, than any pony I ever saw. Right. He was re just really smooth. Yeah, Here's he... Here's two of your sons, uh, Sean, with, uh, I think, Gold Hancock. My picture's covering up, but I know that's him. And then yes. Classy Motivator. Uh-huh. Um, 
Candy, uh, he actually, with Darren Vincent, his, one of the last years of the Stallion, actually won Grand Champion Stallion at the International Show in Tennessee, I believe it yep, was. Yep, 1994 he did, yep. That's yeah, right. So, yep. And uh, obviously we had, you know, Gilded. All right. <laughs> Guild of yeah, the Grand Champion Stay, and how dare you? You know, and just kind of point of reference to people say, oh, well, the horses that you buy at an international sale, really, how are they? Both of those horses I bought out of the international sale, and and uh, both of those horses went on to and right. great horses for my kids, and, and after they got done, they actually retired, got to retire here at the house. And, and, uh, That's but great. Went back most Mo's still out there in the backyard just enjoying his retirement. Really? Yeah, that's cool. He's well, 27, 28 years old. Wow. Well, this is a good time to kind of put in a plug for the sale. You know, last year due to COVID, uh, they couldn't really have it. They barely were able to have the Congress, but they pulled that off. But, you know, it was just yeah. probably a good idea. They couldn't have a big gathering. And uh, But now it's going to be back this year. You know, and it's been going on since 1957. But coming all the way from California like you do, it gives you such a great opportunity uh, to be able to pick up stuff from all over the country, you know, and bring it back to California yeah. and then and then make it go on if you sell it to other families or keep it in the backyard or whatever. But Well, these horses both are, are national and world champions. And, right. You know, they came from the sale. Yeah. So I, I plug that sale any day of the week. I do, too. I that sale was a huge part of my life for a lot of years. You know, I read pedigrees there, and, I mean, that was the case. I would quit a job if I had to to go to the sale. You know, I mean, if my boss right. said you weren't going, I'd say, well, too bad. Here's my one-day notice, you know, or my two-week notice because <laughs> I'm going to it. So, But most of the time, everybody knew, you know, I was going to something like that. So. I've, I've bought many horses out of the sale, and I – glad about everyone yeah so. <laughs> all right here's gold hancock and chris doing the flags i'm gonna speed through these a little bit so you might not see them right away when i'm seeing them but uh oh that's one of chris's favorite pictures ever is it okay i'll go back to it then so uh, no, no i see it yeah yeah and he loves that picture he i like the leg wraps and the red barrel they match <laughs> yeah yeah and that, that's the Suncrest side. That's why I found that other that picture you just had up. Of, right. It's back now. And, and, and um, Chocolate Bunny because um, it was a Suncrest horse. I didn't mention Chocolate Bunny during the Suncrest segment. So, uh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I forgot who bought her, but we actually we ended up putting her through the sale one year after he was done with her. And uh, somebody, I don't remember who bought her, but... Okay. Yeah, sometimes you lose track of who bought. <laughs> right. And there's a photo yeah. credit to Pam. Uh, you pronounce her name yeah. Bartlett, right? Pam Bartlett? Uh-huh. Pam Barlet, yeah. Barlet. See, when I say Barlet, they correct me and say Bartlett. <laughs> but, oh, well, I've always, my whole life, known her as Barlet. That's somebody else who watched me grow up at POA. Right. You know. It, and there again, she's a lot. She's done a lot of history for POAs by taking pictures in, on the West Coast, oh, you know, Oregon oh and California. God. Yeah, you bet. we'd be yeah. lost without her uh, camera all these years. So yeah, she's always taking such great pictures here in California of all the kids. Right. And, and see, yeah, here's so. a throwback. Now here's Carbon Copy again because I didn't have time to put them all in chronological order. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's at the international show. Yeah, that was probably in what, Oklahoma City? Uh, I would think so, and yeah. with that rail, it looks yeah, like it, yeah. Yeah, that's Oklahoma yeah. City, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there you are. Uh, oh, you're doing flags like your son there. It looks like it. I, that's because I taught him if you're not going to go for it, don't do it at all. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's the way to be in life, right? <laughs> there's there's no walking in, in flags. <laughs> No why, walking in the why, why do you think I had chips in my skin? Right. <laughs> There's Lady Salty Don and you doing flags, too. So Somebody put the, the bucket over on the, the edge for you. You must have paid somebody off. They moved the bucket. It's not in the center of the barrel. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't know why Yeah, they didn't just do that, but Salty, <laughs> oh, that, that mirror was fast. Yeah, well, the little britches, you know, were fast. There, there's classes in history where the top four at the international show in game classes were his offspring. So, and then you combine that with a quarter mare, of course, you know, you're going to have power. So, uh, that's when we started wearing helmets. 
Right. Um, right. Uh, here in California, uh, a young man had a motorcycle accident, one of our club members, and um, they started pushing, wear helmets for safety. And I said, I'm wearing a helmet. So we started wearing helmets, and it kind of caught on, and then they made a national rule for helmets. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's, so, yeah. we need that, you know. Yeah. Uh, this is not too long after I got salty. She was still in the process of changing colors and getting into shape. And right. Yeah, she's like dark that. here. Yeah. She's still the the pretty yeah. red color. Yeah. She was a nice looking mare, for sure. Yeah, oh, I, she was. She was a beauty. Yeah. I I just loved that mare. She was. She was a really pretty girl, and I spent a lot of time getting her. I I, I got her first of the year, and that was the last year. I, that I had weeks to get her started <laughs> all right I didn't know much so. sean this, she probably won't say this herself but she supremed that mare that year oh she did okay she did all right the mare did not come to her with any much training and hardly any points and she Maybe trained her and, and and got all her points on her exactly. that's cool and and half of her jumping training was done while we were traveling <laughs> well that's the way to do it sometimes so. Oh, yeah. here, here's a cool picture. I think I've seen this in a California newsletter. I used to get the California newsletter back in the day when I was a director, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, here's Danny and Chris on Salt Lady Salty Don and Raylan's Cupid Doll. Aw. Look at those happy kids. Yep. That horse is all funny. Yep. <laughs> that Cupid Doll is the daughter of a Suncrest pony that she didn't mention. His name was Big Ten Four. Oh, Big Ten Four. Yep. I, yes, I forgot to mention him. I got him written down here. Yep. He's a national champion sire. He had uh, one winner for sure. It was yeah. out of him and that little mare we, or big mare we had named Delight. Oh, okay. The picture uh, of Delight. Delight. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Cool history there. Yeah. I forgot to mention Fiddlesticks and Big Ten Four. I didn't mention them. Uh, yeah. There's so many of them. <laughs> Sean said you knew your history story. well, so that's why I'm glad you're on here so you can help me out. Now, here's uh, Peaches and Cream and Gold Hancock. This is more of a modern photo. I guess. Well, to me it is. I guess they're growing up now. But <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's, um, was that the international show? Uh, Darren Vincent trained Peaches for us and did JPFC, and then, you know, she moved on to Danny and... Danny did quite well, and okay. actually, I didn't even think to mention that Peaches went on and she actually had three poles for us. Did she? Okay. Um, one of them, actually, two of them was were by Suncrest Tattoo. Okay. I, I, I it all totally, ties in together. That's why you're on the show I, tonight. So. I know. I, I I totally sitting here, and when you put Tattoo up, I thought, oh, she had two poles with her. Right. Who was uh, Peaches and Cream? What was her breeding? Um, oh my gosh. Put you on the spot. It's Santee Saladin. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. sense. The Palomino color. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mike, Mike saw her at the California State Securities as a weedling, and he said, I got to have that there. I got to have her. I like that blaze, that big blaze yeah. on the Palomino. Yeah, that's classic yeah. for sure. Well, he's my husband thinks you just cannot go wrong with the Palomino. All right. Yeah, so, there's a uh, lot of Palomino foals this year. I've been following all the foals born, and there's, oh, yeah. it's coming back again, that color, for sure. Yeah. Here's Matthew well, you know, with uh, oh. Cupid doll. Yep, yep. <laughs> Look at the size difference. <laughs> yep. Wow. <laughs> now that boy's, like, about as tall as his daddy. <laughs> yeah, and he's pretty tall. We need to do a shout-out to Mike. That's your husband, right? Yes. So I've I've yes. seen him at POA shows. He's usually tagging along. So, yep, he's yeah. always uh, always there. Yep, who is Santa Gold Hancock fan? Uh, I'm trying to think. Somebody's asking that, yeah, on the thing. Uh, I should know, but I don't right now. Like I say, I've slipped a lot since I haven't been raising them for 10 years or so. I uh, My history slipped. I could probably find it. I, I, could, I can find it. I just 
Don't yeah, know. I could look. To, it's actually it's at my desk right now. If I got up out of here, it's at my desk here at the dealership because I have my old gray book I dug out, and I have the sire and dam and breeder of all the national grand champions up to a certain point, like 2000, when I quit doing it. And Santee Rose Hancock, somebody said, okay. Uh, that, would, that would make sense. Yeah. I knew it was a Santee Hancock. I didn't remember Rose Hancock, but you know, Santee Hancock was the famous grand champion gilding. So of course he wasn't Palomino, but, and he was by tough plotted. So, uh, okay. Here's another britches. This is little bitty britches. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> that little mare was a lifesaver because that picture you're showing right there, that you showed of Matthew and Cupid doll. Right. He went in the showmanship class with her, and he was jogging, and he stepped in front of her, and he, he ended up getting trampled right down into the dirt. Oh. <laughs> after that, he was a little scared. Okay. So, uh, we ended up getting britches not too long after that because she's a lot shorter, and um, the height difference of the two was a lot better. But then all of the boys ended up what, uh, showing um, uh, britches, um, so... It right. worked out well. We had britches for many years. So right. She was a good little girl. Been Somebody there. on the comments said Rose Hancock was a quarter horse, but she wasn't. She was an Appaloosa mare. I'm, I'm almost positive of that. But I want to thank everybody for their comments. And I can't see some of them who they are. Uh, it just says Facebook user. But I remember seeing her out at Jeans when she was an older mare, uh, Rose Hancock. Uh, here's Cupid doll again. Again, I gotta go through some of these pretty fast. Some of these are, okay. but you'll see them. Uh, you'll see them pop, pop up. Yeah, uh, that's Cupid and Chris. Right. Yeah. There's that the like world, them. world and south, uh, west regional gold Hancock. There's Danny and Lady Salty Don. She's she's an older mare there, but boy, she sure kept her stoutness. <laughs> she. Oh, that mare was. She was really a phenomenal mare. She really was, and uh, she just gave it her all every time she went out. Right. So, so this was one I was going to ask you about here. This this is true clarity, and I threw this in kind of in the middle because I didn't uh -huh. know where this fit in in your program. But explain this well, POA to us. So um, I got her. <laughs> um, I wanted a, a bit a weanling to show. I like getting weanlings at the sale and stuff, and I hadn't found one that I totally wanted, and then I decided on one, and the people had already left. Well, it was the Spencer's. Um, okay. And uh, they had already left, and so I called them, and Dave said, well, you, can you come down and get her? And I said, well, okay. <laughs> so I, you know, uh, it's on the way to California. Right. So I, I uh, Linda Turner was with me, and um, so I had a whole load of horses already, and I had just enough room for one <laughs> wingman in the back, but I was going to have to throw some feed out, oh, wow. you know, or give it to the Spencer. So Dave met me at a gas station down there in, um, I don't know, you call it, is it Chickasaw? How, how, do you, how do you say where they live? Oh, um, uh, Chickasha. Chickasha. Yep, Chickasha. Yeah, so, That's just down the road. So, it's on the same highway I'm on right now, basically, Highway okay. 81. Yep. So I drove down, I went ahead and just drove down there, and uh, we put her in the trailer, and um, and uh, he said, well, why didn't you tell me when we were there? And I said, well, by the time I decided, you guys had already, I went over to your stalls, and they were already gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, but it was pouring down rain, and anyway, we got her loaded, and we brought her home, and, and okay. uh, she was just, she was a really nice mare, and uh, I had her for... Oh, probably about three and a half years or so. Okay. And uh, Stacy Irwin trained her out for me, and then unfortunately she kind of decided to grow a little bit more than our. Oh, than okay. Breed allows. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go again. The California sun did that. You yeah. Know. But, uh, but I, I, you know, we found a nice home for her, somebody that didn't, you know, wasn't in POA. You know, I think good. we kind of jumped. And stuff like that well she, she looks like her. a classy mover there oh. nice neck head neck and shoulder Beautiful. uh spencers Beautiful. i gotta give a shout out to them they've been doing it for a long time and uh, of course dave grew up in poas and then raised they raised their daughters in poas they oh, still are some yeah. of the best breeders going so oh uh, I, I bought multiple horses well from here's another one i know this one's from spencers because it's got one of the stilettos one of their names for sure so well, she was she was uh 
um, Flex Hire Faturity winner. Yeah, Flex Hire Faturity winner. And you bought her at the Faturity? Yes, I did. I yeah. was, uh, I lost my mind one year and bought two Weanling Phillies <laughs> all the same year. Who and was the, the other filly? Who was the other one? DK Bouncing Dreamer. Oh, okay. I bought her from Lori Crone. Look at that. I got some stuff right. There's you and Mike yeah. with DK's Bounce and Dreamer. Another yeah. another good program, uh, Lori Chrome. Yeah, yeah, the Dakota Chrome. And uh, yeah. the DK's have made a good name for themselves. They they come up with the color, you know, and there's one there that's, uh, yeah, that's a lot. She's, what, 11 years old already. So, or yeah. more than that. Yeah, um, we call her Gretchen, the Palomino. She's actually still lives in, in Arizona. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, but, yeah. I uh, decided that I needed two weanling fillies one year because apparently you can sell two in one flash. I don't know. Right. Do. You can clone you yourself know. or something, yeah. I like them both, and I just couldn't help myself. Well, that's all right. Life's short. you got to just do stuff like that. Yeah. So but Here's another go, sale both. find. I think you bought him at yes. the sale, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, his name is Champ because I literally saw him by Champ, and I just liked him. And so yeah. he became ours, and he is... He's still with Lindsay in Arizona. He's a um, he's still a junior horse, so I'll get him back to ride next year. But Lindsay's doing a fantastic job with him. Right, she does do a good job. There she is with him. Right no, there. No, that's me. Oh, that's you. Yeah, okay. He was, a, he was a yearling colt, so I still had him. She doesn't get him until they're about two. Okay. Well, this no, oh, I oh, I changed yeah. the slide on you. Yeah, this oh, is this is Lindsay. There yeah, I knew that was you holding him. Yeah, this is. This is okay. Lindsay showing him, yeah. So there's yep. a trophy in front of the the face yep. there, so that's good. Uh, you and I have talked about this horse's sire. It was uh, Doc's yep. Diamond Dude, right? And, yes, uh, and I have him also. You have him. And, uh, yes. you know, if I would have got back into POAs, that would have been a stud I would have tried to get. He was born the same year as his fav- famous chocolatey, uh, you know, the Impulse horse, Chocolate Impulse. Uh-huh. But... Uh, I always liked Diamond Dude. He was a stretchier, you know, and a little more, you know, halter and modern. But his stuff can move too. So, um, tell you what, Lind- Lindsay and I, we say um, quite often, we just really, really wish Camp would have got his daddy's face and ears because they are the most beautiful little face and ears. But poor little Camp didn't. He didn't. Yeah, he got a little. <laughs> we won't talk about. He got a little hook there, but that's all right. He's got a nice no, face. No, we love him anyway. Yeah, we love it. but there we go two cell horses right there but right but, uh, you know but i showed um we call him clint uh, i showed him got his halter rom on him okay and, uh, so he has his rom in halter so right you know i have and, pictures of him and that other the chocolate stay and when they're like oh probably three weeks old and then three months old and then their yearling year doc used to send me pictures of his babies and his yearlings you know i got them through the like 20 years of, of progression of his foals and uh uh-huh. them too i knew i knew they were both going to do something of course the one you know really got famous and then uh your gilding didn't get much of a chance but the foals he sired turned out pretty good you know yeah like, it's kind of funny is because um earlier in the year um i that year i of the sale i had gotten a call from doc and he said um, he had this stallion, and he knew that I really liked that bloodline and wondered if I might be interested in buying him, that he could have him shipped to the International you know, Congress, and I could pick him up, and this and that. And I said, gosh, I, I said, Doc, I, I understand. I said, but I just only have an acre. I really don't have enough land to just have a lot of horses. Right. And that, that year at the sale, I ended up buying him as a guilty. <laughs> So, I guess it was about a year later. I a guess. year later, yeah, because he sold him to a family in Wisconsin, yeah. I believe, yeah. yeah. And then he they... Was, he was before he got sale, but yeah. um, I was like, I ended up with him in the long run. Right. But, uh, it was, was meant like, to be. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I guess it was meant to be. So right. That's a... So, here's yeah. a good photo here. This is Clay Hill Scarlet Mist, and I know this is an important POA in your your life. Uh, he definitely is. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh, saw that little filly in the in the sale catalog. There we go. The sale catalog again. The sales um, catalog. Yeah. Yep. And it was just kind of a, a a shot that they had taken from her from her hip, and um, looking forward, and I thought, 
really like that chili. And, and sure enough, when I went over and saw her, and I, we had got there late that morning and didn't even see the whole select fire security class. And I didn't even realize that she had gotten second in it until a little bit later. Right. <laughs> Which is terrible because I love that class. I didn't even normally watch it. I don't know what happened that morning, but um, I'm just glad that she ended up with us. Cause That's I a lot of POA history there. You take uh, Pat Burton and uh, Janelle. Oh, yeah. And then the Shackletons, and then you and Mike. I mean, that those six people right there. And then that's an awesome filly too. She's out of uh, or by a Doc Stallion too, of course. Uh, Sh- yes, Chuck sir. Stallion is a rough and tough son. So yeah, yeah. I think I got yes. a lot of pictures of her. I'm sure you sent me a lot. There's Lindsay yes. and uh, and Scarlett. So yeah, she yes. tur- she grew up to be what she should have, you know, by taking second in the futurity. She wasn't a fluke. She. She's a great looking mare, so. I just, yeah, that, she's definitely my keeper. Right. <laughs> she, uh, she is. I just, and Lindsay has done a fantastic job with her, and that, that there is her full sister. Okay. Yep. She's got a little more color on the legs. The sister does, and. Yeah. Yeah. She's different coloring and stuff, and uh, Lexi's just hanging out here being a grandkid, fun little toy. So. Okay. I can't show them all. All right. <laughs> There's not enough of us, so. So this is what I was kind of talking about towards the end here. I kind of put some of them in the back, some of the older pictures. But here's your brother yes. with one of the older POAs. This one, Sire, is Siri Rex. Right. And he was, uh, we talked about uh, Dean Kenny earlier in the Blue Ribbon, but uh, he was the 1970 Grand Champion stallion, Siri Rex was. And, uh when it was in California. So yeah, that's a, that's a daughter. That's a mare, right? Yeah. 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 You know, it's a, uh, here's you know, one. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just say there's just a lot of history, you know, it goes back to these bloodlines that you just, Oh uh, yeah. Where'd Siri Queen come from, mom? Siri Queen came from a uh, lot of dots, Cornelius, and, but she was out of the Siri force. So oh, okay. She was not out of his stallion. It's at, but I mean, he had that theory for us, but he, we never saw him. So that lot of that's that, that's the one that that we got from him. So Linda, since I have you on here with Sean, Sean and I was talking earlier about some California breeders, early California breeders like the Kennys and stuff. And uh, you know, I've kept records over the years of people that have won or bred for winners, and I got some names here. Cornelius is one of them. Their POAs have won seven national titles. And, of course, Pombos, you know, Pombo and Son. And then uh, Crabtree, Melicote, Sykes, and then Owens. That's you guys. Those are some of the names I pulled off my list. So I'm sure you know most of those names. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Pray to do. Yeah. Now, uh, Roy Melicote actually had a uh, series Norconian sheet who he got from Paula Cooper. Okay. I remember Uh, him, too. Pictures of him, of course. I never seen him, but, yeah. He was the sire of uh, the Pat Patrick Joker. Oh, he was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he must have been a Siri Sheik. Yeah, he was a Siri Sheik son, I think. Yeah. And he was in California. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Tracy said, what about the Johnsons? Well, there's a lot of families I didn't mention, like the Keegans and the Johnsons. And, but, you know, these were some of the older ones I was talking about. So, uh, go ahead. Well, there, were, there were more of us, but I just can't think of everybody right this minute. Right. And I didn't there, write there down every single name. Yeah, there were more of us that were producing animals. And we were fortunate enough to have kids to break them and train them. Right. You know, get them rideable. We didn't necessarily break and train and show everything. But you got them but, ready uh, for somebody else to go down the road with them. Yeah, you know, they were very rideable when they would leave our place, and it's because our kids right. were able to train them, train right. them to ride. And uh, that's where we were lucky where some people didn't have that. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have that. You know, I didn't have any, I don't have any kids. Right yeah, there. we were talking about Silver Sioux earlier today. And, yeah, that was Sean's first POA. Okay. That's the one that goes back to WW's son of Bear Paw. Bear, yeah, Bear Step. Bear, Bear Step. Yeah. yeah. Bear Step, yeah. yeah. 
and that mare's all up in the air because she always had a pole outside the range. <laughs> she wanted to get to her baby, and she's yes. right, Sean's riding bareback too. Look at that posture! Wow, on a brood mare. Yeah. She didn't look very well, tall though, was she? She was small. Well, she said she was only like forty nine inches. So yeah. Our first two POAs were forty eight and forty nine inches. Right. Well, back then, you but know, the height limit was fifty four then too. So. Our kids were little also and that you know the kids could train could uh groom and everything on their ponies a lot easier at that height at, because they were little too right so as the kids grew they had to get bigger ponies that's just you know that's just how life goes <laughs> right that's true there's yeah. kiowa chief i'm too now i'm skipping over some guys but we're, we're kind of coming to the end here so Oh, now we got a more modern picture here. Max's Bonnie Buttons. Oh, I don't know where we got her exactly. I, mean, I know we got her from the Yeah, that were up in Bakersfield. But um, this right here is the Flynn family. I they showed with us. They were I gave lessons to them and stuff. Okay. And they showed. Um, they traveled around with us. It's the Sean Flynn. I showed him the lead line all over, and that little kid was a character and a. <laughs> He was something else, but um, he did quite well. I, I was trying to find the results from that year because we, um, I mean, we hit something like 70 shows that year. Wow, uh, that's a lot yeah. of shows. That's back well, when you said, you know, Southern California was huge in POAs. Um, I mean, a lot of people well, don't realize that. Now, the whole state of California was well represented, but Southern California and just that, that area like where you got Norco, Riverside, I mean, it was... It was huge in POAs. Well, the Flynn's went cross country with us. Yeah, and right. they they traveled along with not in the same rig, but they traveled along with us, and we went all over the country that year. Yeah, well, shot and that little boy ended up first in the nation. We uh, our goal that year was to try to end up in the national awards, and okay, there was a, a group of us that and we were successful, and you know, I my horses ended up, and I ended up with. Carbon and Salty, both of them, in the top ten performance horses. Okay. Well, that and, brings uh, us to this picture here. You're on, it's almost the same angle as your uh, sister on the one on yeah. Snowdrop, but this is Carbon Copy, and yeah, uh, yeah that's a cool yeah. picture too. Yeah, must have been the photographer's angle. That must have been how they <laughs> took their pictures that day, yeah. huh? Yeah, he wasn't moving. He might have been leaning against the fence or in a chair. It looks like he was standing. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. I wonder who the photographer was. Who knows? Maybe you guys remember. I don't know. That's... I don't. I don't know. That was quite some time ago. There's uh in the buggy again, or in the four wheeler there, the carbon copy up in. Uh, yeah. That was that was fun time. That's a great picture too. My my mom and I took off the the day after school let out that year, and my mom had a route that we were gonna that whole summer and we I mean we hit a week of shows in Oklahoma and we didn't miss shows anywhere they were all over the place and we had a little a few days of downtime and we went here in South Dakota and it was just wonderful right. we had so much fun just think of the experience you picked up as a kid doing that you know? <laughs> you're you still know, some, some of my the best times as a kid was showing POAs it yeah. absolutely was I think a lot of people feel that way you know what I mean yeah. it can be pressure and stuff too but uh, you know I oh, I learned a lot of life lessons that I know today just from getting out of the, yeah. your town and you know of course I grew up in a way different situation in a very small town in Minnesota but I mean I learned a lot about just living you know going to POA shows yeah uh, well I noticed like David Woods on it right now and he put fun times well David Wood was in California, him and Darcy and his sister, and they showed Bomber. Right. We talked about Bomber last week, I think, yeah. or two weeks and, ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all showed together, and, I mean, we had great times. We had so much fun. Sure, we were competitive, but then on the outside, we were friends. Right. So, right. So, uh, you know, we had just the best of times. So, yeah. Uh, you know, but. Well, but here's I a was, great picture that your mom should really like because it's. Uh, the three kids. Look at that picture there. Isn't that a great picture? Oh, that's a great picture. That needs to be on a postcard. I mean, them are little ponies now compared to what we're breeding. But still, I mean, that's the history, you know, and that's way before yeah. 
the the big horse you know people are breeding the big horses now but uh check out those ruffled shirts <laughs> oh i know look at those wow those were little ponies but they were also little kids right they were little kids so so it fit didn't it i mean that looks great but but the height limit was only 52 inches right so in comparison they're pretty normal sized ponies for the time that the height limit was only for sure right now it hadn't even gone up 54 at that time because i was looking on sue my the mayor in the middle her paper says she was 48 and a quarter so really she wasn't that far off. Right. Well, nowadays you, know? you consider a, a 52 a small, even though it's still 51 and under. But, uh, yeah. you know, 52 is tiny, and that was the limit. You know, you, it was 52. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know, we, I mean, we thought we were just everything because we had our ponies, and we were with them constantly. We didn't just show. I mean, right. we would go out all day long on our ponies in the hills and, you know, come back and have lunch. Right, and they were bred you know. to do it. I mean, they could handle it, you know, and they, they still are bred that way. We we don't have enough little ponies now because sometimes it's hard to market them, but uh, there are some bloodlines that are staying small, and some people are staying true to it, and we need that for sure. We need yeah. the little pony for sure because there's going to be little kids always, so we need little ponies. But yeah. uh, well, I you know, threw this one in at the end too. Here's a, a picture of you with a baby, with uh, Silver Sue's baby. So. Oh, that's probably. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a great that's picture too. First POA foal. I got to get up at like two o'clock in the morning when its baby was born. Oh wow. <laughs> Isn't that what this breed's about? That's right what there. it's about. I used to stay home from school, or I'd be in class and I'd get a page. <laughs> Kent Rourke to the office, and I'd think, what did I do? I don't remember doing anything. You know, I thought I was in trouble. Then I'd get in the class and they're like, you're supposed to call home. A mayor had a filly or something. You know? <laughs> and that's how big a part it was. And then I'd, I'd call home and mom would say, yeah, arrow or copper, whatever it was. And she'd describe the markings to me because I'd be upset that I wasn't there. You know, usually yeah. I caught it, you know, in the mornings, but sometimes they'd fall in the day. And, uh, you, you know, know, you mentioned the Keegans and um, they, you know, they had Smoky Copper Cloud. I found one of the... Uh, a picture and some information on him. It said, because uh, he was standing, it said he was in one of our uh, old news bulletins I had that said, you know, he was half Arab and this and that, but I'd never seen one of them when he was standing at stud. And so I found that, and then I found a picture of Plotted Sugar Star when I had uh, won, because I trained her. Okay. And I, when I had won the uh, maturities with her here in California, because it was a big maturity. Right. And, uh, so just kind of, you know, you forget the pony sometimes and stuff. And then uh, the Rankin uh, here in California had a pinwheel barmaid. Yep, for I, sure. And I I started barmaid. Oh, you did? Yeah. You heard it here first, people, on the POA podcast. <laughs> so Sean yeah. said, you know, she's one of the greatest POAs of all time, Kenwell's barmaid. I know, so. I, I know that. And, and some people here in California had went to the Bateman's ranch and picked her up and then it they just they got out of it and the Rankin fought her and they really didn't know how to start her or anything and so I would go over to their place and work her and I started her and, right. and everything and started ground driving her and started her and stuff and she was the sweetest thing she was a, a high selling she was actually bought at the sale as a baby yes, she was. yeah they, Bateman's consigned they, her yeah. And then they uh, took everything to sell that that year. Yeah, and sold and everything. She was a high seller because uh, Barkeeper's Barbie doll was the year before. But yeah, Rankins had uh, what was it? Saint Nick's four bars, I think. Too not Saint Nick's. Yeah, Saint Nick's yeah. four bars. They had uh, him too. Uh, I, I don't remember that one, but remember. they um, yeah, when he said just she she was just doing other things and what have you. So right. that was just kind of some of those things that you know you forget until you start looking through some some of these old magazines that you have you know our state bulletin itself was very big and that's just looking through different things and right. I was like whoa you know forgot right. that oh forgot that oh that kind of brings to mind but well you know, when we, we got in it our, go ahead well we trained all of our own animals you know and, and stuff 
we never sent them out. The only thing my parents ever sent out was carbon because he was a stallion and they wanted him done a little bit different. Just wanted to be sure. Right. Just something a little different. But we trained everything ourselves, so people brought animals to us. So, um, anyway, it was just kind of one of those things I found. And then I found Milky Copper Cloud because um, he was in one of the things, and I didn't realize ever that he was half Arab. I never yep. realized that. Milky Copper. Speaking of half Arab, we were talking earlier about a story about Terexi. Uh, or Texari. Texari, I'm sorry, Texari. Uh, tell that story, Sean, real quick. Oh, my mom has that story about Okay. Arab. Sorry. Well, my one of my friends uh, named Peg Rose, that's where we bought our first two POAs, introduced us into the POA world, literally. And one day she said, come on, go with me up to this ranch, and I want to show you something. And so I went with her. And it was the ranch where Texari was born. <laughs> cool. And she had um, this lady with her friend, and her friend had this <laughs> foal born. And she didn't know what to do with it because she didn't need it. <laughs> right. And it was Texari. Oh, wow. She said that peg that she would take Texari. I mean, at this point, Texari was probably three or four years old. So I knew him as a, you know, half grown horse. But, right. Um, this was how he began. And uh, Peg took him and she says, yeah, I'll, I'll do something with him. <laughs> and so he turned out to be pretty nice looking horse. All right. Yeah, that's kind of the story that I thought of it, of him. But I actually have visited the ranch where he was born. Well, that's cool. He was sired by an Arab, right? And his dam, they had the people that had him had her didn't really know that she was happy. She didn't have any spots or anything. Okay, uh, I never saw her, but Peg had seen her, and Peg said they didn't know what they had there. Right. They didn't know that the mare had any happy. Here comes this baby <laughs> with white cloth on his rear, and they what is where did those come from? Right. And right. it turns out that was him. But uh, I mean, his story turned out real good. Yes. Uh, right. I have pictures of him on uh, the POA history page. I'll have to bump them or or show them again. But I know he's on there, especially when I talked about half Arabians, and uh, he was yeah. one of them. So. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you uh, two ladies tonight. I've learned some stuff, and uh, I, I want to think I'm a historian, but there's always room to learn. And, you know, the people that are doing it and did it are the ones that know it the most. And you guys, uh, especially, you know, you a lot of California history, and and uh, we got to plug the sale a little bit. That was good. So uh, it was just fun. Well, it was nice talking. And meeting you through the yeah, meeting you through the. I don't know if I'll ever meet you in person, Linda. So I've had some good talks with your daughter over the years. So we usually uh, like in Tulsa or something. I haven't been to the sale in a while, um, but I may go this year just because of the podcast. I don't know if I'll get to Illinois or not, but uh, it'd be fun to go. Well, up I there. don't travel around to the shows or, or the sales or anything anymore, but. Uh, I keep up with them because through her, I want to see what's going on. <laughs> well, nowadays you can watch a lot of it. So, yeah, you can watch videos and stuff now. So exactly, yeah. I always watch the when she's showing. I always watch the show from home. Right. I know what classes you know that her horses are going in, and so I I sit and watch shows if they're if they're telecast. <laughs> right. Well, she's well, got good taste in POA, as Sean does, so she she got that from somewhere, Linda. So it's just like <laughs> well, I think pedigrees. she developed that mostly on her own. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, thank you very much for uh, inviting us to be on. It's been a lot of fun, and you do an absolutely fantastic job. Well, thanks. With this, and we really appreciate all the time and effort you put into this, and each week. And um, just thank you very, very much. Well, thank you. Tell people that so it's much. not that bad. People get nervous. I've asked several people, and sometimes there's scheduling conflicts, but some people are just nervous to get on the air, you know. And oh, it's not yeah. that bad. We're just sitting here like we would at a at a show, you know, like in, in some oh, chairs in front of the stalls, you know. <laughs> so. so it's easy, and it's fun, and it's just something to just – have a conversation with you you're very easy to talk to oh well good well i am a car salesman so you know that's <laughs> so. all right well thank you so much for uh joining have a me good evening. 
You too. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was Linda Owen and her daughter, Sean Weiss, from California. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Some of these names, you know, I never pay, pay attention on the microphone. But I ve very much enjoyed that. That was a great conversation. Uh, I know I learned a lot tonight, and I know a lot of people didn't realize that Sean grew up in POAs. And uh, boy, did she ever. You know, she showed at national shows and Supreme POAs in California, raised POAs and uh, Raylands. I've known the Raylands since I've been following POAs so uh, as history, and I didn't realize till a little while ago that that was uh, Sean's family either. So uh, a lot of good uh, history there, and it ties in with the, you know, it kind of ties in with the Suncrest. So, of course, we can't talk about all the California breeders tonight, but uh, we will eventually get to to quite a few of them over the episode. So I have about 25 episodes penned out and probably another 10 to 20 uh, rough sketch. So well, there's a lot of topics to talk about. So uh, here's a picture of a couple Suncrest babies there. And Pat, I'm just going to kind of wrap up the show. So uh, I want to thank all my uh, guests and all the people that uh, gave me pictures and stuff. Uh, Lisa Reckin and Darren Vincent uh, sent a bunch. And, of course, Sean and her son Chris sent me uh, probably two batches of uh, 30 to 40 pictures each. So that just helps the show. So uh, here's a really cool picture. This is a little later here in life for Pat Patrick. And this is uh, Suncrest Sandman. We talked about him. He's in Minnesota now uh, with the Kimrys, and he's a gaming champion, a national champion. But here he is. Is a younger, he might even be a stallion in this picture. She's got a, a chain on him, but uh, he's still got his color here. And this is just, I thought, was a great picture to kind of end the show on. And, uh, you know, Pat dedicated a big portion of her life to raising POAs. She loved her POAs. You could tell the passion when you'd talk to her. And uh, she raised some good ones. She figured out the, the niche there in her little uh, area of California, and uh, they... They went across the country and became uh, champions all over. She's one of the top breeders of all time in history. So, um, again, I want to thank everybody. Again, there's sponsorships available. If you want to drop a, a picture of a full or something like that or a team coming up for a regional or the national and promote them a little bit, we do have a lot of viewers. Uh, I believe our videos have had uh, close to 10,000 views now on YouTube and facebook so that's pretty good this is just episode seven so uh next week we're going to go to my home state of minnesota uh virtually of course and we're going to talk about the great minnesota mares there was four grand champion mares that called minnesota home during the 80s some of them were bought and brought into minnesota and some were there uh, so i know you guys will recognize some of those and uh, we're going to have some good guests too so uh, again thanks for uh, uh joining Tonight, again, this was episode seven of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond, uh, POA uh, California Dreaming, I called it, and uh, we talked about Suncrest and got to talk to Sean and her mom, so I hope everybody enjoyed the episode. Please tune in next Tuesday when we'll be live again for episode eight. Thanks, everyone.